Good morning. This is KERO-TV signing on to bring you another day of the finest in television viewing. It was 65 years ago when KERO began its legacy in Kern Broadcasting. The year 1953, most Kern County residents were accustomed to getting the day's news on the radio. But those lucky enough to own a television set would see KERO, its first television broadcast from the lobby of the El Tejon Hotel at Truxton and Chester Avenue. A few years later, operations would be moved to our current home on 21st Street, 23 ABC, the only local television station operating in the same building for more than 60 years. And during that time, KERO falling under all three major network affiliations at some time, NBC, CBS, then ABC. It's here where night after night, Bakersfield and Kern County residents would get their news, the anchor desk occupied over the years by legendary journalists. But perhaps one of the greatest to grace the stage, a man considered the father of television news in Bakersfield, Burley Smith. Ike and the prime rate combined to produce a sell-off on Wall Street today. He was on all three stations during his 37-year career in Kern County, becoming known as the Walter Cronkite of Kern County News. His face, his voice, and his infectious laugh became synonymous with 23ABC News. As a result of the latest Africanized bee discovery on Round Mountain Road, northeast of Bakersfield, there will be an additional survey. I, I beg your pardon, it's... This has nothing to do with bees. They're not funny. It will include a 30 to 40 square mile area surrounding the Kern River oil field. If you were watching news in Kern County, you were most likely watching Burley. His loyal viewers included the legendary founder of the Bakersfield Sound, Buck Owens, who surprised Burley with his own red, white, and blue guitar live on the air in 1988. I want to present this to you, Burley. Uh, because, uh, you know, for years I watched you, and of course we worked together for all those years. And because uh, uh, I always knew that when you told it, I knew that's the way it was going to be. Buck, I don't know what to say. Buck, the only... I love you, boy. Thank you. Huh? Thank you, Burley. Uh, Burley delivering the news on 23 ABC from 1954 to 1960, then again in the 1970s, until a cancer diagnosis took him away from news operations in the late 80s. His career and decision to step away from the news desk, catching the eye of CBS News evening anchor Dan Rather. Seriously, Burley, we at CBS News know just how much you've meant to Bakersfield and to Kern County. It's your excellence over the years that has helped make 23 News the most watched news in Kern County. Hasta la vista, and good luck, my friend. He fought cancer for four years and shared his journey live with viewers from his hospital room at Memorial. I want to thank all the people who sent their cards and letters and their prayers. And I want to thank my wife, Carol, who spent uh, countless hours here with me. Well, she, just, she hardly slept during the whole time. And especially, God, I want to thank you so much. He would lose his battle with cancer in 1990, a vacancy on the news desk that hit Kern County hard. We begin our 6 o'clock hour of news with heavy hearts here at TV 23. Today we lost one of our own, Burley Smith, to cancer. Burley's death and the stories of his life and impact in Kern, delivered by Jim Scott and Robin Mangren, who together anchored the news at 23 ABC during the 1980s and 90s. On Carly. Jackie Parks. Todd Carley and Jackie Parks would follow, anchoring the news together for 15 years. The pair known for their in-depth reporting. Thanks everybody for being with us tonight in the St. Jude Dream Home. In support of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. But away from the news hour, KERO studio, also home to many variety shows throughout the decades. How come? How come? We all come? including Cousin Herb's Trading Post, on the air in the 1950s, an afternoon variety show centered around the Bakersfield Sound. Buck Owens would frequently appear as a guest. You can't believe how exciting it was to be involved in this brand new medium and nobody knew what to do. We were experimenting all the time. Don Rodewald, who joined KERO Radio in 1953, would make the switch to TV in 1956, hosting the popular afternoon show, Two Hours of Informal Relaxed TV, a show featuring interviews, movies, and popular segments on air for nearly 20 years. Don telling 23ABC's Jackie Parks in 2003 his favorite and most popular segment, Come As You Are. I would tell people that if you can come down to the station, then send me a postcard with your name and phone number on it. And every day I would draw a card out and call that person and say, I want you to come as you are right now to the afternoon show. 
then I would interview them and give them prizes. And it was hysterical what some of them would bring down. Some would come down carrying an iron. One woman came in carrying a chicken. I caught a woman in the shower one I was going to say. And she was fortunately a good sport and uh, a cute little thing. And she came down in a big bath towel. <laughs> Shabang! Hello, my name's Casey Kasem. Radio legend Casey Kasem graced KERO Studios during the 1960s, occasionally taping his weekly musical TV variety show, Shebang. Another local favorite broadcast in the KERO Studios, The Uncle Woody Show, during the 60s and 70s, featuring Woody Bryant, a local toy store owner turned real estate tycoon. Around the same time in 1967, KERO becoming the first local television station to broadcast in color. News and broadcasting has come a long way in the 65 years since KERO first went on the air. We now connect with viewers online at any time when news breaks, hours before traditional news broadcasts. But one thing hasn't changed, our commitment to this community and our responsibility to tell the best stories that uphold the highest standards of journalism, 23ABC, and the legendary news and programming that's filled the airwaves for 65 years made right here in Kern County.